Good evening, Nifnex. Thank you, thank you. I've got one person who arrived tonight. Good evening, Nifnex. Yay, that's better. You've all had a few wines by the sounds of it. Um, there's plenty more. So um, I'd like to say, first of all, a very big thank you to Steve from Clean Skin Cellars. Hey. Um, I hope you all have one for me. Um, unfortunately, I can't drink because I'm expecting my first baby. Yay. Um, boo. <laughs> um, so tonight is the eighth Nipnex Success Academy evening. So um, we see, I see some new faces. Just put your hands up if this is your first one. Yep. Hello. Sam, you're lying. Welcome to all of the new guys. And uh, veterans, raise your hands. Yeah, all the people with the wine in their hands. <laughs> <laughs> um, right, guys, so um, also I'd like to say thank you to Kyle. Um, you can see our film guys have been here for quite some time and definitely using up uh, the electricity allowance this evening, the amount of cameras we have going on. Um, of course, we have a, another venue change. Now, um, I think what Zishan is trying to do with our venues is represent the significantly different types of businesses that we actually have with in this academy. We have graduates, we have small businesses, large businesses, solopreneurs, we have professionals who are thinking about going into the world of entrepreneurship and everything in between, which is what makes this such a unique and special community. One of the most important things that we can do as entrepreneurs and business owners and professionals is to connect with others that are like-minded. When you're out in ventures of entrepreneurship on your own, you can find yourself very isolated, sometimes feeling a little alone, for we are quite unique creatures. We are 1% of the population. So when you're surrounded by 99% of people who are not like you, you need to be spending 99% of your time creating a community around you that either loves what you do and wants to pay you for it, <laughs> or is a massive supporter and helper and guider of what you do. And that's precisely what social media can help us do. So we've got some fantastic experts here for you this evening. My name is Sarah Cordiner, and I'm mainly going to be acting as the facilitator this evening, but also representing you guys as business owners who are using all of the platforms of social media to try and get seen, heard, noticed, and importantly, make lots of sales. Now, three years ago, I rocked up in Australia. You may be able to tell there's a Pom accent there. And I had absolutely nothing other than a 25 kilo suitcase and a whole load of hope. In fact, my first three months in this country, I had not even anywhere to sleep. I had a towel that was <coughs> stolen, uh, borrowed, I mean, um, rolled up as a pillow, one as my mattress and one as my, my doona, um, yet made a seven-figure business over the last three years and now have a significant following of community members. And I did that entirely using the platform of social media. So I personally am a very, very big fan, a very big advocate of it, but also, like many people out there and in this room, have also been bombarded with conflicting advice, conflicting information, don't ever post this on this platform, always post that on that platform. What? Um, <laughs> times, locations, what we should use it for, what we should share, what we shouldn't share. Oh my God, it's overwhelming. So hopefully tonight we can question these experts here this evening and start to try and fumble our way through perhaps what we should be doing and what we can do, whether it's to fill events, whether it's to sell products, whether it's to sell services, whether it's to build a community, whether it's to simply become known in our marketplace for what it is that we do. So this evening, we have Doyle Bueller, who is going to be our LinkedIn specialist. Wave, Doyle. <laughs> Woo! Um, Doyle is actually periscoping right now. <laughs> yep, so who has heard of Periscope? Yes, some. So Periscope, guys, is a live video streaming service. It's owned by Twitter. Am I correct, Twitter man? 
Yes. OK. <laughs> so it can, you have to have a Twitter account to use it. And it connects to your Twitter account. And you simply, as if you would normally record a video on your phone, this just pumps it straight out to the internet. Now, Doyle actually helped me run a Periscope um, and a Twitter wall on uh, the Edupreneur Awards, which is an awards evening for entrepreneurs that I run. And we had 2 million people follow the event live on the evening. How cool is that? Yeah, so this is the power of, of social media, and I'm sure by the end of the evening, Doral can actually tell us how many other people from across the world joined us here this evening. It's pretty cool. We also have Mr. James Lush. He is going to be talking to you guys tonight about content. So what we mean by that is actually what you post out there, what information, what words, what language you actually post to your audience to either get them to connect with you or preferably to buy from you. We have Mr. Kim Barrett. Woo! Kim is our Facebook expert this evening. So those of you using Facebook, or more importantly, not using Facebook, um, Kim is the person to be talking to you tonight about what you should be doing with that. And uh, we have Steve Cartwright. <laughs> he's, um, <laughs> he's annoyingly got better shoes on than I have. Awkward. Um, <laughs> so Steve will be talking to us tonight about all of the various ways that you can use Twitter to get more exposure, more leads, more sales and more followers. So the way this evening is going to run is we are actually going to do a bit of a live um, brainstorming on three real life, very present businesses. And we've selected these in the hope that it will um, give you all some very real advice. Our first business this evening is in honour of tonight's sponsor. So we will be talking to Steve from Clean Skin Sellers. Who in here has a product to sell? A physical product or maybe you turn your IP into products? So yeah, we've got about a third of the room. Yeah. So there will be some ways that we can use social media to sell stuff. Now, if you are a service provider, you have a service to sell anybody. Yes, quite a lot of people in the room. Now, there are lots of ways that you can turn services into IP, intellectual property, which essentially becomes a product. So that would be really useful case study for you guys who are selling stuff um, to learn how to use social media to do that. Our second business, we'll be talking to a non-profit organization who um, will, who is, where's Kath gone? I can't see her. Kath? who is actually um, promoting something that people are often a bit afraid to talk about. And she'll be talking about the fact that she really needs to raise awareness to fill an event for Gynecological Awareness Day. Now, how many of you think that at some point in the future, you may like to run some kind of event? Yeah, quite a lot of us. Okay, so that's going to be really, really poignant for a lot of people in the room. How can we use social media to bring a group of people together in one place um, for an event. And our third business, we don't know who it is yet. We would like some people to put their hands up, not yet, if you would like your business to be live brainstormed by our experts here this evening after we've had our two first case studies. So without further ado, I would like to welcome up here to tell us more about their business, Steve from Clean Skins. Woo! <laughs> so, Steve, you are going to be live, given some tutoring by Beautiful. our fantastic experts here. So, would you please like to just tell everyone, um, in a couple of minutes maximum, okay. um, what your business does, who your customers are, yep. um, what you're currently doing, and where you're struggling, what your challenges might be in terms okay. of social media? Okay. Beautiful. Great. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, maybe to the side. Um, thank, you, thank you for that. Um, just to get an idea of who we have in the room, could we first of all just get a raise of hands as to how many people are using Facebook for business? Oh, loads of them. Cool. Okay. Uh, LinkedIn. Twitter. Instagram. Pinterest. I could go on all night. They're the main ones. Okay, fantastic. Um, who would like to go first? <laughs> 
Um, I think from um, a strategy point of view, um, it, it's really important for us to truly understand who our customer actually is. Now, when I say to you, who is your customer, you might be inclined to answer that question as um, they're a male professional aged 35 to 45 and blur. Okay, well, that's great. It's a good start, but it actually doesn't tell me anything about the people who are buying from you. Now, you mentioned, Steve, um, that one of your customers may be business owners because how fantastic would it be if we're running um, a corporate event? Like we've had some hands up here of people that want to run events. I mean, your customers are in the room right now. So we, um, well, some of us, I will admit to this, um, can be quite egotistical. We are quite proud of our business. Like, damn, it's nearly killed us to build the thing. We're proud of it. And there is nothing more awesome than the thought of my business logo being on the front of a bottle of wine, which is what you mentioned earlier on. So, yeah, awesome. So when you're promoting to me, whether it's on Facebook, which is where I hang out a lot, um, it's, whether it's on Twitter, where I also hang out, I want to see my own logo on the side of the bottle of wine because my ego is going to buy that because I'm gonna to wanna to send that to my customers at Christmas time as a present instead of a crappy card. Um, I'm gonna to wanna to have an event that has all of my logos down the side of the room. So yeah, really get to know your customer so that you can know then how to promote on Facebook. You could even send out um, you know, uh, images on, on Facebook to their, to their walls or in a private message. Do you, um, sorry, do you, do, 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 do you um, bottle um, and package everything yourselves? Okay. One, um, one way that's been really, really um, useful for helping me to build a community and indeed other people is a principle called process, not product. And to engage people with your story and with what it is that you're developing, whether it's a service, whether it's a product, people actually like to know the process by which it was created. If you're an expert in a particular topic and you have um, a particular service that you provide, share your continuous learning about that topic with your audience. Every time you learn something new, share that with your audience. If you're making something, um, perhaps you're writing a book, maybe you are making a physical product, one of the most fantastic things you can do is actually show people how it was made. Show people the in-draft version of it. Now, I help people write courses for a living, so I sometimes post photographs of my wall covered in post-it notes and brainstorming and piles of paper all over the floor. And that's what people love. Actually, they don't care as much about the course at the end. They love to see how it was done. So with you, perhaps what you could do and everyone else that has a product, can you either film take photographs or do status updates about the journey of your product or service is taking on its way to being produced. Because people love that. I'd love to see a picture of your big bearded trucky loading everything onto your, to the back of a truck and pouring it all through into a wine bottle. That is exciting, that's interesting. That makes me want to taste the wine even more. I like it. You may go back to your conversation. <laughs> um, just to give you some scenarios there, uh, from, from a point of view of a business person who's using all of the platforms, um, some ways that all of those platforms have won for me. Now, I love Facebook. I'm a big Facebook fan. Um, I actually get a significant portion of business from Facebook, doing business to business to business, as well as business to customer. Now, I was actually having a conversation um, just during the networking session there with somebody, and I hope you don't mind me sharing this. Is that okay? Um, <laughs> who, um, who said, well, you know, we actually um, deal with investment properties, so Facebook's not really good for us. Uh, you know, lawyers can't use it. Biz some businesses can't use Facebook, you know, such as law firms, for instance. And I said, well, who uses lawyers? Everyone. Yeah, people on Facebook. Um, so I get a lot of business through Facebook, and um, you know, I recently filled an event that earned me fifteen thousand dollars using Facebook alone without advertising, because Facebook allows you to build relationships. 
Facebook enables you to make friends with people that you haven't even met yet. I've actually got some of my bestest friends that I've met through Facebook. It's incredible. And it's when, they, it's when people can follow your story and be part of your story. Um, so Facebook for me is fantastic for that. LinkedIn, I've been on LinkedIn for a very long time. And um, actually six years ago, um, I won a contract with a national bank delivering training through LinkedIn. So as Doyle said, you can get very big deals using that particular platform because you can go direct to the decision maker. You don't have to phone the business. You don't have to go through the gatekeeper. You find who you want to call and you find the CEO and you can pick up the phone and ring that person. Twitter, again, like I said, I ran an event not long ago and we had nearly 2 million people watch the event. So it's great for exposure and large numbers of people into your funnel. That's actually quite a good point. I think um, as business owners, particularly if we're either startups or we're solopreneurs, is we have to act lean. And we're always trying to find ways to save money and cut costs. You know, we have to. That, that we don't have a lot of choice around that. If we don't have the budget, we don't have the budget. Now, um, I carry this mindset. If you can save money, why not? And I'm also somebody that thinks, well, I'll give it a go and do it myself. Now, I spent thousands of dollars last year thinking I can do this you know I can watch some YouTube videos I'll figure it out and um, set up these Facebook ads and they went out and people were clicking on them awesome nobody bought anything I wasted thousands of dollars because it is um, an area of expertise in its own right. It really, truly is. Now, I can say this, I'm not a marketer. I'm not here trying to promote my services. Um, but you, if you don't understand how to create custom audiences, if you don't understand how to do targeting and retargeting, and if you don't know what those words mean, you don't know enough to actually be running your own ads. So to bring in an expert that will help you turn $1 into $2 or more, would you be happy to spend $1? Yes. So where I wanted to save a bit of money paying an expert, I lost thousands of dollars where I could have given perhaps 100 bucks to an expert and made 300 back. Yes, I would make sure that that's a good return on investment. There's actually a sneaky spy tool um, that you can use now. I don't know how many people have looked at their competitors' pages and gone, oh my God, I can't compete with them, 100 million likers. Um, <laughs> they, they've gone out and they, they've bought likes because actually a few years ago, that's what we were told to do. Make sure you buy some likes so that your business looks really popular and then all the people that are really your followers will only follow you then. Okay, well, um, there's actually a tool called Social Bro. It's free. And uh, it will bring up all of the people on your friends lists and it will show you all of their different social media platforms and it will actually show you how many of their thousands of likers are actually engaging audience members. Now, I actually I play with this quite a lot because it's fun. <laughs> and um, I've, I've got friends who have got I've t over 250,000 followers. And when you click this button, it shows that they've actually only got about 700 people that are actually active users. Ha <laughs> ha! <laughs> so that's called social bro cool. anyone else okay any other questions from the audience before we go into our next case study all righty i would like to invite kath mazella up to stage who's got a lovely wall of undies up here for those of you that can't see and i will let her introduce so one of the, um, the things that Kath really would like help from, from the experts this evening is how can she fill this event for her Gynecological Awareness Day using social media? How can we spread awareness about gynecological issues full stop? And um, in particular, and I believe it's the 10th of September, how can we fill that event? Um, I'll go since I've got the microphone right now. Is um, I, The first thing I love is your competition. Now, I first saw your make your own undies two years ago when you presented them to a women's health workshop that I was attending and um, competitions guys are absolutely fantastic for um, getting viral exposure to of your business and of your products and services um, now there are lots of free platforms that you can actually use online which connect with all of the social media platforms now for my recent awards night I actually used one of these platforms and the one I used was called strata.com that's spelt S-T-R-U-T-T-A. 
It's a free platform where you can run competitions. So what you could do is put out on social media the competition of design the best pair of undies and the prize is and they have to take photograph of their undies and upload that to their competition page and they then have to get the most likes for their undies and the page or the photo with the most likes wins. Now the great thing about Strutter is you can simply just have it as raising awareness, anyone can press like, anyone can vote, you can, sh you can press share and my photograph will be shared out to all of my friends and all of my platforms. Or you can actually use it as a really valuable lead generation tool. Now one of the most important things you guys need to be doing when you're sharing content, when you're doing tweets, when you're sharing videos, is you need to be getting email addresses. Because if you're not collecting the contact details of these people, how can you follow them up and turn them into customers? Now what Strata allows you to do is change the settings behind the scenes. So if you wanted to, you could also actually say that you're only allowed to like and vote somebody's pair of undies if they enter their email address first. Now my event that I ran um, a, few, uh, a month or so ago, we actually only promoted for eight weeks and we had over 77,000 people vote. Wow pretty big numbers. So could you imagine if your fun undies, boys, girls, men, women are all designing them, it's a great family thing anyway to get the kids involved with, it's raising awareness whilst at the same time promoting your event and promoting what you stand for. How do you find raving fans? Where are your tribe? How do you make them yours? Um, this is something that I've had to work to do um, over the last couple of years, obviously moving here, um, having not a single person in Australia on my friends list. So there's a couple of strategies that you can use, guys. Um, one of them is to go onto Facebook and at the top there is a search box and type in all of the things that have anything to do with your customer. So as a random example, um, if your audience are entrepreneurs, type in entrepreneur type in business, type in business Perth, Perth entrepreneur, Australia business, and it will bring up tons and tons and tons of private closed groups where entrepreneurs hang out in a group all the time. Now, most of those groups have 2,000 plus members in them. Join every single one of those groups and contribute to the discussions that are happening in them all the time and eventually those people will start becoming your friends and your fans and joining the groups that you have. That's one way that I've built my audience of raving fans. So for instance, type in health, type in women's health, type in women, type in feminist, all of those kinds of things and you will find the groups where people are hanging out. If you sell dog grooming services, type in I heart dogs, type in dogs are brilliant, I love dogs. That is where you're going to find people who have dogs. So hang out in those private Facebook groups and make friends with those people and they will start becoming your raving fans and your followers too. Now another one is a little bit of a secret growth hack um, that I've been using and particularly to try and fill my awards event um, is there is a platform that's completely free that you can use called um, Target Grow. So that's one. And there's also another one which is also completely free called Tweet Deck. Now in these platforms, um, I'll talk about Target Grow first. Target Grow, you can type in up to five keywords in the free account that your target audience are likely to use. So what words are your customers using in their tweets, in their statuses, in their Instagram posts? Um, type in those words. What are they interested in? So it might be hashtag health, it might be hashtag women's health, whatever it might be. And what it does is it will find every single hashtag or post on the internet with that word in it. And with one button, F, favorite, it will favorite all of them. It will like them all on Twitter. And when you like your customer's status, they start following you. In about two months, I've had over 2,000 of my target customers follow me on Twitter. All I've had to do is follow back. Now, um, it's a really quick, easy task. It's the first thing I do when I turn on my computer. It literally takes 30 seconds. And um, 
that is how I then promote posts that that audience are interested in, whether it's an event, whether it's download my ebook, or whether it's buy my thing. Because they're all my target audience, the engagement is really, really high. Now, TweetDeck is the other one. TweetDeck, you can type in, there's a little search um, mic magnifying glass, and you type in a word of who you're looking for. Maybe you target HR managers, type in, type in HR manager. Maybe you target um, wine sellers, type in wine seller, type in a hashtag that people might use. You can literally use any keyword you want, and it will find every single tweet that has that word in it and from that platform you can like it, you can favorite it, you can reply to it, you can share it. So you actually have people posting about women's health. You can go, oh hey Sarah, um, awesome point, maybe you'd like my ebook, here's the link to download it. Bam, I actually outsource that to virtual assistants. We got it, we got it on video yeah. for you, it's is anyone else selling information products, whether it's templates, documents, books, ebooks, any kind of guides? Yeah. Um, there's actually a really cool free, uh, free platform called Gumroad, G U M R O A D. Um, that, unlike um, Amazon, that will charge you a, a very high monthly fee, um, it actually only charges you when you sell something. It only charges you 5% when something's actually sold and you've been paid the money. Um, what It's really simple to use. You, you literally, you can log in it with your Facebook account um, and you just simply upload the files. So if it's an ebook, you just upload the PDF like you would to an email attachment and it says, how much is it? You type it in. It says, what information do you want to collect from your customer? You say, oh, well, first name, second name, email address. Bam, publish. And that gives you a link that you can then spread out on LinkedIn, on Facebook, on Twitter, on your automatic posts that you're putting out, and people will just start buying it. So it's a really great way. It also sells physical products, by the way, um, but it's a really great free platform if you want to sell stuff or sell templates or, or anything like that. Cool. Great. Okay. We had a question over there. I've got two questions. Yeah. So first, um, you said earlier that you were posting about 8,000 times a month mm -hmm. automatically. Now, are you, is there any stuff you're reposting or are you generating all of that as, as like new content uh, or you, you know, have you got someone else generating that and you're retweeting? Twitter works like this. The tw life of a tweet is about eight minutes. That means that someone's got to be sitting on their screen looking at Twitter when it goes. So I've got 160,000 followers. So I'm lucky at 10% of them are sitting on their screen when I send a tweet. So I send a tweet. I've got a thousand posts on my website. So I have a little plugin called Revive Old Post. Revive Old Post. Yep. There's a free version and a paid version. And. Uh, I have that set on categories that I want to tweet about. I tell you how old the post needs to be, etc. And I set the interval that the tweet needs to go. I know my audience, so I send lots of tweets. So I send a tweet out approximately every 14 minutes, I send two tweets. But that's my audience. If I send more, I get one followers. If I send less, I'm not getting the maximum click-throughs to my website. Does that answer? No, yeah, I'm mm. Mm. Yeah, the other one was the international bestseller trick. Now, is that that you've managed to get international bestseller in various countries, or does that have to be all at the same time? And you've just got to have gone viral worldwide. So you can hit worldwide. It depends on how um, on how well you market it before, and how well you kind of set it up, and how well it gets picked up. But essentially, you do it within a day. So I, when we did it, we did it on the time zone in Australia. And then the same time zone in the UK, same time zone in the US. And we hit overarching on um, the top category, number one. Because you can hit number one in a category, or you can hit number one on Amazon within that time frame. That's how they measure the bestseller status. We did that, so we hit the top one in there. But that's because we marketed it. We spent uh, in, on that one hour gap, as well as I was already in a room with 40 people doing a course. So I said, all of you, pull your phones out right now. Stop in the course. Jump on, download this. But we also spent uh, like 400 bucks on a Facebook ad within that one hour. And we generated, yeah, a ton and ton of downloads um, just, just for that gap. So 
you, you can, uh, it depends on how well it gets picked up, but you can basically go in, in the like overarching the world, but you have to hit at least two countries to be classified as international, and that's number one over the overarching. I mean, don't think I've any idea yet, but you know, so it's good to know these things. <laughs> can I just add one thing? I, I think all this, you know, about building your audience. I know for a fact that if you post business stuff on a personal page, your account will be shut down by Facebook. It's not if they catch you, they will. You cannot use a personal page to advertise your business. And I will pass the Facebook man over to explain the rest. <laughs> I disagree. <laughs> we finally got your debate, Zishan. Finally! <laughs> Um, actually, I completely disagree with you, Doyle, um, because um, I actually think that if you have 10 service providers or 10 products in front of you, um, all offering the exact same service, which one are you going to buy from? The one you like. The one you like, the one you know, the one who's think you've got a cute dog or whatever people buy the people they buy the person not the product and I've been experimenting with this for a long time because I've had so much advice with some people saying you know you shouldn't post anything other than business you know you've got corporates following you you've got you know big potential clients watching you don't post pictures of your dog <laughs> well actually I started playing around and um, as someone who's a very proud person all I've ever been doing for a long time is posting my successes and my victories and how perfect my life is all over Facebook and other social media. And actually, I started talking to people who told me they were getting pretty damn sick of it. Who cares? Lucky you and your perfect life. <laughs> Nobody is interested in that. Do you know what people are interested in? When shit goes wrong. <laughs> they really are. You know, they like the process. They like to see how it was made, not that you're a really smart person. What they also love are your challenges. Now, whether that's your personal challenges, how you're feeling, how um, th things have gone wrong, you know, stuff stuffs up in business every single day. And actually, the times I've shared my biggest failures and my biggest fears and my most horrible, dreadful, darkest moments have been the ones that I've had the most likes and shares and private messages on. They are actually have been my biggest converting sales machines ever. Why? Because as James said, it's a story. All of a sudden, I'm not this like unattainable, successful person. I'm a human just like my customers and they go, wow, that's inspiring. Much better. So do you know what? Do post a picture of your dog. Do post a picture of your husband or your wife and your Sunday morning eating ice cream on the beach with your kids because that's what makes you real. That's what makes your customers be able to relate to you instead of just seeing this unattainable, successful pedestal human that they cannot possibly relate to. But do they want to know what you had for breakfast? No. In your face, Doyle. <laughs> <laughs> Names, the name of the page actually can be quite important here. Um, the, the name, if you, how many of you have got a business page on Facebook? Yeah, quite a lot of you. Now, most of us tend to name our page after our business, our actual business name. Whereas, actually, that's not always the best way to go. Like I said, if you have a dog grooming business, don't call it AKA dog grooming business. Call it I Heart Dogs because that's what's going to make your audience like the page. So what can you rename the page to that's going to make people like it? Because quite frankly, nobody cares about my business. Nobody cares about your business. What they care about are what that business gets them. Yeah. So does that mean I should start again? Like no, but you can change the name of your page. I mean, what's your opinion on that, guys? Yeah. Yeah, you can change. Um, I actually lost a huge amount of money on a bad provider last year. Um, they, these guys are professional marketers. So they know how to big themselves up, right? <laughs> so um, I, I followed somebody who, whose adverts were amazing. Um, they, well, they looked it. Um, and I didn't actually do my homework. I was so um, covered in stardust by this person's amount of followers and everything else that I paid the money and got no results. Please look at their website. If they do not have testimonials on there, then, then that might raise alarm bells. Um, once they have got testimonials, you want to talk to those people. 
Don't just do a Facebook message because you don't know if they're fake profiles. You want to have a Skype call or a phone call with those people who have used that person's services before and ask them everything. Do you like the guy? Were they slow or fast in delivering the service? Did they get you? How much did they do for you and how much did you have to do? Find out what their particular experience with, is and was so that, um, unlike me, you don't lose a lot of money with the wrong people. Yeah. Not that good. <laughs> okay, we've got the ding ding bell We're all up there. Um, thank you to you guys for everything. We now have a draw. Zishan, would you like to do the honours? Jenny is up. I actually um, have something for you, Jenny, because you couldn't attend on the night. Um, I ran the Edupreneur Awards, and Jenny, our very own Jenny from the group here, actually won the Life and Career Coaching category. So, congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> okay, you go. Well done. <laughs> Well, that's a wrap, guys. Thank you very much for coming along this evening.